if we're going to realize the full potential of the symbolic life, we can't hold ourselves back from its challenges. We work hard to avoid the psychic pain. But the truth is that a life of meaning necessarily includes a place for painful reflection. In the same way that light and dark mutually support and contain each other, so too are joy and sorrow inseparable in a fully lived human life. We can't have one without the other. In our strengths, there is a hidden weakness. And in our weakness, there is a secret strength. Our virtues, that is our strengths, only enable us to be independent. Strength and independence are in themselves inadequate for a fully lived human life. When we live out of our virtues and our independence, we do not need anybody, but our inferiority links us with mankind as well as with the world of our instinct. What is the strength in our weakness? The growth that comes through defeat. And so the move here is one from invulnerability to vulnerability. We need to allow cracks to form in our psychological armor if we want to let in the light of self-awareness, compassion, and meaning. How can we experience the beauty and poignancy of life, for example, if we cannot acknowledge its fragility, its heartbreaking brevity? So teach us to number our days, says the psalmist of the Old Testament, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. It's not the presence of struggle or pain, that's the problem. Those are difficult to be sure, but they are simply a given reality with human existence. The problem is the lack of an adequate means for understanding, for relating to and for metabolizing those struggles. And that is some vehicle of meaning. Meaninglessness inhibits fullness of life, Jung says, and is therefore equivalent to illness. Meaning makes a great many things endurable, perhaps everything. It's the struggle that matters, not the resolution. That's the takeaway here. And coming back around to Jung, we learn that what he means when he talks about a truth that penetrates to the heart is this, that real knowledge comes when, as he says, we find our way to the inner and perhaps wordless irrational experience. To engage life through the heart, it's true does not give us clear answers. But it does bring us into relationship with the unnameable, the inner, and the wordless. And this is the key. This is the takeaway, really. The symbolic life is not a path of knowledge, but a way of knowing. We don't embark on it just to gain knowledge about some aspect of life, but to grow in our relationship to life. And perhaps by taking on this work in this way and letting the world, in a sense, make a home in our heart, we just might find ourselves more at home in the world.
until next time.